Hello, this is Sinta Lee from Poste. And thank you for inviting me to, to this. Is, uh, and I'm really pleased to share one of the recent work in my group, you guys. And as you can see on the title, it's uh, Physics for AI versus AI for Physics. Actually, there are two different topics. And for Physics AI, it's by, what I mean by that is that I want to I think in the previous uh, presentations, a lot of uh, speakers mentioned the physics informed neural net, such as Kings. And I'm going to show you some of the, the advantages of, of that. And the second topic is for AI for physics. So it's data driven scientific discoveries. So these two uh, are going to be the main topics for today's talk. And before jumping to today's talk, and I, I like uh, I want to take some moments to think about the mechanical engineering AIs. As you all know, that it's, uh, it's a design and manufacturing problems and mechanics and materials and simulations dynamic controls. On the other side, AI is data analytics, and you already know it's machine learning and deep learning and even for the reinforcement. So we all believe that it's the uh, AI is for mechanical engineering, AI is gonna be the new tool to better understand physical or mechanical behaviors or to discover better design schemes. So what I'm interested in here is that I want to bring and develop state of the art of AI technology for mechanical engineering problems. So there will be the main motivations. And let's think about Direction of deep learning in the uh, physics or mechanical engineering disciplines. So, okay, here I represent three different categories. So, the first thing is that data driven AIs. I mean, you already know that uh, instead of having physics to understand it, we can collect some data from the mechanical or any kind of engineering systems to get some AIs or machine learning and deep learning to, to figure it out. Uh, to discover the general or hidden uh, hidden behaviors. That's uh, what I mean here is pure data driven AIs. On the, on the, the one in the middle is that, I would say knowledge guided AI or physics informed AI. And we all know that there's some, if we know some knowledge or physics into the systems or application that we have, I personally believe that there's no reason that we're not gonna use that. So in, in the physics informed AI, the question is how we then you know, combine these two physics and the data into together. And the last topic or categories that I define it here is data driven scientific discoveries or knowledge discoveries. In some case, suppose that we have no idea of physics or what's going on in the in the system that we are interested in. Or the system is too complicated, so there's no way that we can understand. In that case, we are hoping that from the data, is it possible to, to find out or figure out some scientific reasonings or discoveries? There will be the last topics for. So uh, in my presentations, I'm going to from, uh, from the first to the uh, second and third. So the first is the data driven AIs. I believe that most of them are familiar with. So in order to give some explanations, I'm gonna use this uh, the wave propagations is a uh, spectrum physics as a as a examples or demos. So if you are not familiar with the wave propagation, that's okay. Because uh, I'm just gonna use as a as a one of the examples or applications. So if you think about sound or wave or pressure, whatever, it's wave scattering parameter from scattering object. So you can think you can think of the wave is transmissions that reflect or observe a scattering. So this will be the, the 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 applications that I'm interested in. So in many cases, we already know all the physics. We, we know the, uh, how the wave propagated, how to scatter or reflect when the wave pressures uh, hit the object. So in many cases, if that's simple enough, probably we can solve that some kind of governing equations. In most cases, it would be the, the, the 
derivatives. And if somehow it is the complicated object, probably we have to use uh, the numeric simulations model. So we can simulate it so the acoustic pressure field, like we can see in the on the right side. And here, this is the definition that I have here. So I want to use data driven method. I, I'm, I'm going to assume that the AI have no idea on the physics. So how do you use the data set to, 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 to figure it out or to predict the way the field whenever we have some kind of arbitrary object in the middle? So let's let's think about the simple approach that we have. So we can, I guess, the first thing is maybe to supervise the learning. So in order to to have supervised learning to teach AI the wave propagations, we need input and output at the same time. So we need input for the training data set, and probably we need at the same time we need output for the training data set as well. So for input data is that the object that I'm going to put in the middle, right? But object is it's a it's a, it's a randomized so. We, we don't know. So in order to 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 teach the, the AI models to, to to so we have we this here is we parameterize geometry of the objects that we're going to put it in the middle. But of course, we are not able to cover entire the, the object space. Probably it's going to be some of them. So and the corresponding outputs. I mean, we have to run. The numerical simulation models. So this one is with the the as you can see, this kind of animation is going to be outputs. So if you think about supervised learning problems, single image as inputs and object arbitrary object put in the middle, and the output side we have we're going to have like sequence simulations uh, results going to be the out, output of this supervised learning framework. So how can, how how do you think you can teach this the the training data for the, the data driven method. The thing is that the difference is we have sequential data set, I mean the outputs, and we all know that is these are dynamic behaviors governing by the some kind of physics that we suppose that we don't know. And let's think about neural net models, since this is the image. And we can use some kind of convolutional neural net. So in the in, in here we use uh, the auto in, convolutional auto input type of networks that we can generate. And instead of putting the this input and output, since we know the sequential dynamics behaviors, probably and and we know that all the dynamic behaviors is related to the the, the time intervals like d over dt's. So in order to have the this neural net is able to pick up the dynamics probably we can put two or three consecutive input image and the, in the corresponding outputs will be like another image at t at time t plus one if we have a bunch of the data that we generated from the, the numerical models we can teach them and hoping that this kind of the convolutional or encoder type of models is able to learn from the training data set. So this is the, the outputs that we have and ground truth and predict. What do you think? You think it's, uh, it's uh, and another object? Again, it's ground truth and predict. If you more favor of AI, probably it's, you might say it's the AI matter, it's, it's at, at some level is able to catch the physics. And if you on the physics side, probably this is error is too large and you're not gonna agree that the matter is, I mean, it's the approximation is error is uh, huge. So uh, in order to see that is the, the first law is ground truth and the second is the predicted out of the models and if you subtract these are the errors for discrepancy between the, the simulation models and the model that uh, the AI models. So 
The good thing is that since we know the physics, I mean, we, we know that it's dynamic behavior. So it's good thing about this the data driven is that we use the sequential dynamic has been considered. But don't forget that this is still data driven approach, right? So, and now this is the time that we have to, we have to think about why do not need physics. And we all know that it's data driven, it's a black box. The outcomes are basically physically inconsistent. Right? Think about if the data is coming from data is coming from the physical system, so data itself is physically consistent. Right? But the AI model doesn't have to learn the physical the consistency. Yes. So there's no guarantee on that. And in Many, many cases, the training or testing input and output relations are, is, looks good in many cases, but I don't think it's, a, it's a, the AI model is one of the fundamental things, like sparse and low dimension things like uh, in the previous uh, presentations. So, it's, so in other words, it's uh, within the sample predictions and out of sam uh, the sample predictions, it's poorer on the generalizations. So the last one is that interpretability is again like the previous uh, professor Pinkins talk. It's the uh, interpretabilities and the generalization. These are the big issues on on pure if you decide to use the data driven method only. So now it's time to think about the physics inform neural net. And as you can see, if, if, we, we, if we do have a prior knowledge on scientific theory or whatever, there's no, I mean, we have to take a full advantage of that to increase the predictive performance. And when you think about the AI or deep learning models, always people are uh, complaining uh, data imbalance problems and data shortage problems. I believe that the physics inform is the, one of the most promising way if we integrate these to 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 overcome these these kind of imbalance or data showcase issues now let's move on to knowledge guide or physics informed ai examples and these are the taxonomy of physics informed neural, uh, neural net and in the first columns there are many different deep learning models like a and C and R and whatever. It really depends on the data type that you are thinking of. And now uh, the middle column is that we have many different knowledge represent representation method. I mean, one of them could be like differential equations or some kind of algebraic equations, or even for the graph, right? If you have some, if you know some the entities and the correlations and causal relations, probably we can represent that. The knowledge into graph representation forms. And even like CAE simulations outcomes, it could be the, another type of knowledge representations and human experience and domain knowledge. And the last column is how you integrate those knowledge into neural net in many different ways, but here I only represent three of them. The first thing is the feature engineering. Feature extraction is, I think, one of the most powerful and most easiest one where you can embed it. The physics knowledge into the model. And the second thing is design. What do you mean by design is that if you know here is designing the structure of the neural net, suppose we have many different inputs, and if you somehow if you say suppose you know that these two groups of inputs are, has nothing to do with each other, probably we can separate things and combine at the end uh, downstream of the neural net. And the regularization is the, the, the most interesting that, I, that I'm going to continue explaining in the following slides. So this is typical architecture of physics in the neural net. Uh, think about the problems and suppose you have some data set, probably some of this small data set, as well as the physics represented by OD or PD, whatever. And the idea behind is that neural net is Universal function approximator. Just, just we can approximate any kind of functions or outputs. Here, in this case, it could be function of u. 
And since we have some data set, probably this is the, the typical way of defining the loss functions. Like given data set and the output that the neural net is so predicted, we have to minimize the loss. And suppose we have any kind of the physics information, like, for example, this kind of partial derivative equation. And we put it in another loss function. So we call it as a regularized. It's a, it's going to, we can think of uh, consider it as a regularization. So remember that it's a regularized by physics and match with the sparse data set or small set of data set. That's the typical way of architecture, typical architecture of the physics component. So by doing this, we can force the neural net to follow the, the sparse data set as well as the physics. So now let's go back to the original problems that I defined it here and waste the uh, wave physics problems. Now we know that all the wave physics is like that. And if you think about the problems, is we want to put arbitrary object in the meters to two. Then we have those we're gonna work as boundary conditions. So here again in the same framework, and we just take the derivatives of the twice over time and from x and y in the space, and these are the boundary conditions. And this is kind of the, another one, think about the uh, boundary conditions on the object. Because we know that the object is given, so we already know the shape, and we can define the, the boundary conditions that this the neural net should follow. So having that, uh, I'm going to skip a lot of things between, and I'm going to share the, the result over here. And the first column is round two, and the, the middle column is proposed, and the, in order to make some comparison, the last one is baseline, it's the only data driven method. And the total wave and sketch total wave is coming. So it's right before the, the wave is touched up the so all of pretty much the same. Now, once we have that, it's scattered. Yeah. And as you can see, ground truth and purpose are very, very identical, similar, but in, in the baseline. It's, uh, now, let's move on to. So, here, I mean, I can give some quantity ways, but here is a, uh, and you can look at the figures, and these are like three different scattered waves, but the baseline for the only data driven is, is totally different. So these and another comparison that we, we can do is that direction this the reason why we are interested in the sketching patterns that we want to say this is ground truth and the, the wave field and these are the proposed and another baselines here. And we want to know the direction of that. Sometimes we can we want to actively control the wave field having different objects in the middle. So oh, you can see these, these are pretty much, but here the one is using the data theory is not that uh, accurate. So finally, it's a physics informed neural net. There's a lot of advantage over that. Uh, one of the things that I mentioned that generalization performance. In order to show the generalization performance, what I did is that, say here, this, I mean, this is uh, the low dimensioner I use, the uh, uh, dimension reduction. So these are the data set that we use for the training. And here, we intentionally, because I want to, 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 to show you some extra uh, generalization performance. So these are the, the data set, it's not, haven't the AI models haven't seen in, 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 in the training phase. But as you can see in proposed models, since they learn the physics, uh, you can generalize things. It doesn't have to restrict the, the reading sample performance. So that's one way that we can demonstrate the advantage of physics in terms of models. The final topic is that data driven knowledge discovery or scientific discoveries. And this could be the one of the motivations they here. If you 
new, numerous natural phenomena described by concise mathematical expressions, not the AI models, not the black box. So if you think about, say, in history, say like planet positions, there are a lot of observations and measurements. Out of those observ observed measurements, calculus is uh, create invented calculus laws and Newton's and created the universal gravitation laws. So here, what we did is that the, from data set, actually humans did a kind of like generalizations and trying to find out close to mathematical expressions. What I want to do is that instead of human beings doing that, I want to ask the AI to figure out the closed mathematical expressions. So it's a it's a field of symbolic regressions and it's trying to discover the closed form expressions to provide simple yet accurate picture given data set. Again, it's going to give us interpretabilities and generalizations. That's the one of those two weaknesses of the uh, deep learning models have. So if you think about probably again, it's X and Y is input and output. So we're trying to figure out the relations. And what AI model does that we don't know what's going to, what's going to happen inside. But if you give, if you have good models, if you give me the inputs, I can predict outputs. So nobody knows how it works inside. So instead of that, instead of having big learning models, probably we we need some kind of equations. So it's a, it can be sine and cosine, log or whatever. It's, it's, it can be the polynomials. So. I don't think I need to, to more emphasize the, the advantage of having the mathematical closed mathematical expressions over the human models. So key idea is that any kind of mathematical models can be equivalent to transform tree structures like this. Okay. So in the Tree structures, that means if you have, if you are able to do some kind of tree structures, we can convert it to the mathematical experience as well. So let's think about this is a combinatorial data problem. So, not all, we have to think of all the possible cases, we have to combine them to see. And you, you know that this is MP hard problems. And the reason why is that if you have more, uh, like operators and inputs, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be growing exponential, the searching space. So it's almost impossible. So what we did is a human thinking strategy. That's I think what we did. Or like like GA, like evolution of com uh, computation method that we've been trying to do. And now I want to think mathematics as language models. What do you mean by that is that we have mathematical expressions and we can convert it to tree structures. And the tree structures, we can convert the sequence. What do you mean by sequence is that, let's say we have this divider sign and multiplications and constant X and the log and Y. We can define the sequence if we have tree structures. The sequence models is that now we can Consider as sequence as language models, then we can utilize the natural language processing. So, again, study from the uh, equations, and now we have this kind of the mathematical language model that we can utilize to, to optimize. Okay. Now, now, it's, now this is the, the, the starting of sentence, end of sentence, and now we have vocabularies in between. Uh, in order to make sense on the, some kind of sentence, we have certain patterns or we have some kind of finite combinations out of it. So this is now it's optimization problems. We have to optimize the sequence of the, the sentence or the length over here. And how do you optimize it? And that's kind of, so we, we decide to use a reinforcement learning. So we, I'm not gonna go in, in too much details, but we define reward and state actions to 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 manipulate during the optimization process. 
So it's a summary. So view symbolic regression as language, uh, natural language processing is mathematical. Mathematics as a language and language models can be utilized reinforcement using to optimize to find out the optimal sequence of then we can find out the mathematical expressions. And in this field, uh we have symbolic regression benchmark, and we have, they have defined like these 12 the expressions. And as you can see, these approaches are from the data set. We add a lot of noise and some uncertainty, uncertainty. So we are able to find out these the equations. Instead of having dynamic models, if we have these equations, we have we can increase uh, the interpretabilities and the generalization performance. So discrete sequence optimizations and for the today's topic is that what I did I I, I mentioned closed form expressions. I, I this is from the data set I want to find out some kind of closed form mathematical expression. That's what I mentioned it. And another thing is that differential equations, like in the in the Professor Thornton's presentations he talked, and many dynamic behaviors can be represented by differential equations. So from that data set, I want to find out differential equations. So it's a different from finding differential equations from find the closed mathematical expressions. And the last topic is that suppose we have differential equations like that, I want to solve that. Right? That's another the research group from the Boston University. They trying to use a statistics informed UNF to find out closed solutions out of the differential equations. Summary. Like here, eventually, what we want to do is we try to have better understanding of physics or mechanical or any kind of engineering problems. In order to that, given the, the engineering systems, we can utilize governing equations or first principles, whatever. And another approach is that having a lot of data, we can figure it out. These the any kind of machine learning or deep learning AIs. Now, what I want to say is that I, I focus, I mentioned many things from this side, but I believe actually we have two, two approaches or two weapons to, 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 to get here. So AI is just one of the approaches or methods. And the last one is that if we have big data set, a good quality of big data set for each class, Probably data driven approaches might work. But personally, I don't think there are many such cases in, 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 in real case. And most of them we're gonna face to the small data set problems. In that case, I believe that physics informed neural net is one mm -hmm. of the, the approaches that we can try. Okay. So that's all. Uh, presentation that I prepared for today. Okay, thank you very much.